<coughs> Welcome to Eleven Eleven VC Firm. I'm your host Sam Marquis with my guy Kelly Mitchell. What it do? What it do? How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Good day. Cannot complain. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm rocking gear by uh, Bay Area Natives. Um, thank you for the gear. Shout out to them. Kelly, so what's been going on, you know, with your uh, daily activities and, and your company, Invitica? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, it's crazy. I just left a meeting right now with my uh, business partner. Shout out to Sean. Um, what we've been doing now is uh, we've been working on the back end data of everything um, and get ready to pitch to some more VCs and some investors. We actually got a um, an interview with an accelerator. We're thinking about going with them. We might deny them. Um, we are already, we're already making two hundred thousand a month in revenue, so we're mm-hmm. trying to decide on what type of funding we need and if they can actually help us or not. That's dope. All right, so let's, let's backtrack. Walk me through accelerator for those people who are not familiar with tech. Oh uh, yeah, so an accelerator program is basically like uh, they show you the ropes. <clears throat> they offer you if you need help with the ropes, like just how to some. Uh, incubators actually show you how to completely get started if you need a business plan or how to shape it into a business plan. Uh, Accelerator comes on after like you have your business plan and stuff like that and they'll offer you some money. So like the accelerator that we applied for wants to offer us $100,000. I don't know for how much equity in the company. I'm not sure about their specifics. But um, they'll help you get the money and some can even help connect you to people. But it depends on how much equity you want to give up and how much they take and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So most of the people know about Shark Tank. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. What's the comparison to Shark Tank and what you guys are going through? Uh, I like Shark Tank actually, just from an interesting perspective. Like, is if anything, Shark Tank's uh, Shark Tank. What I like about it is they expose like the companies or the people who are starting their startups. So even if you feel like you got lowballed and don't want to take the offer, you got free exposure. Um, and I think mm-hmm. that's better than anything for sure. Right. And some people on Shark Tank, their valuations are super high. Yeah. And, you know, they, they really try to get those numbers and analytics to really see if you got the data to back, back it up, see if you can really make sales. Exactly. But then that's the crazy part about startup. Nobody really knows anything. <laughs> yeah. They don't really know your valuation. Yeah. It's just, a, it's just an estimate. So that's, that's the other interesting part about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been going through COVID-19, you know, during a crazy time and staying in quarantine. We're in California, shelter in place. Um, yeah, so we were talking earlier, uh, it was off the record about masks and N95 masks and the supply of masks. And you said that um, you were dealing with uh, different connections and trying to produce those. Yeah, I could talk a little bit about that. Um, so one of our um, advisors, actually, uh, we deal with one of our advisors. He has lots of money. I'm talking like billions. Um, we've been dealing with connections and manufacturers in China for a minute. Uh, mm-hmm. How we started, I guess I should backtrack. How we started in Vitica is basically th- with my business partner, Sean. He's been doing e-commerce for like five years now. So he mm-hmm. came up with the idea in Vitica, how to streamline the e-commerce um, process. For those who don't know what e-commerce is, it's selling things on Shopify, Amazon, eBay, stuff like that. Um, what we want to do is streamline the process. So we've been dealing with manufacturers all over the world. And through this, we just happen to have a connection with someone who's manufacturing N95 masks in China. Um, and with that, we've been dealing with the government and talking through some deals or some people who are middlemen for the government. Uh, we've been talking about deals. Um, the whole political side of it, it's crazy. That's what I learned a lot. It's not as much about the money as people think and more about politics, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. So how did you get started in, like, e-commerce? Uh, really, uh, my business partner, he, um, I was doing, I worked for a, reg- a sports betting company in tech. That's how I got into tech. I worked mm-hmm. for an app. Um, he had hit me up one day. He was like, hey, man, I got this idea and this plan. He was like, I think you'll be good at it. You have a bunch of uh, Silicon Valley connections and you know a bunch of random people. And I thought it was a good idea. And they was like, oh, I got this e-commerce thing. He was like, I'm going to show you how to do it. So he basically showed me the ropes. And like even today with the uh, COVID-19, if you have an e-commerce store, you're probably making a bunch of money right now. Like I think right now I just made like $4,000 in the last day. Um, it's crazy. Just so many people are buying everything online right now. It's mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, you're working at Invitica. Tell us a little bit about that in your, in your business and your company. Um, yeah, Invitica is a B2B wholesale platform. Um, mm-hmm. What we do is, so I guess I, I'll backtrack. How we got started is uh, my business partner, he's been running an e-commerce business for the last five years. And uh, he hit me up and he was like, hey, man, you should hop on this e-commerce thing. Mm -hmm. And so he showed me the ropes of e-commerce. And then uh, basically he came up with the idea of Invitica by pulling the data from Amazon. And um, you can you can check the data for Amazon and know what you want to sell, know how much is being sold. So you can make smart Mm -hmm. buys instead of just selling random things. Um, That's what the good e-commerce is. And see what what, what products are selling the most. Yeah, that's what exactly. And how much you can see if it's trendy. Um, mm-hmm. You can see if it's a seasonal item. So like stuff like Christmas stuff, you know, like it might be selling right now. So I'm not going to buy 10 million Christmas items because in the spring it's not going to sell. Anymore. So it's data to back all of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what's, and what's B2B? Uh, B2B, business to business uh, platform. So like if you do B2C basically, which is uh, business to consumer, which is what most mm-hmm. people know. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> business to consumer. And then the B2B is selling something business to business. That's where the wholesale comes in at. Um, what we want to do is we want to streamline everything. So if you run an e-commerce store, um, say I'm selling whatever on Amazon. I might be selling Nike shoes. Even though you can't do it. I have to go to Nike's distributor, not even the manufacturer. I'm going to another middleman, which is the distributor. Right. And then they bought however many pairs of shoes in Nike and they're giving it to me at a cheaper price. And then I'm selling it to the, uh, to the retailer if I'm that person. Um, mm-hmm. With that, so I bought it from the distributor and I still have to go sell it. So that's the B2B side. The B2C side would be me selling it to a consumer. Okay. Um, yeah. So the B2B is the business to business transaction because I'm not wearing any of the items. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what's the benefits of, of Streamline? Uh, Streamlining just makes everything easier for everyone. Um, so, like, if you deal with a distributor, for you don't know what's the selling item. Um, if you're selling anything on e-commerce, of course, if you're a retailer, you don't know what's hot, what's not selling really from the distributor. So the distributor just has a bunch of items up, like, here you go, we got to buy these. And then here, throw in some of these, even though we know they don't sell too, so you might have to take something that's not a hot selling item as a package deal because you're buying them wholesale anyway. Right. Uh, what we want to do is we want to provide people with the data that we take from Amazon, put it on our platform and have the products for you to buy. So we'll come up, we'll come up with a list for you to buy the things that are selling. We'll, so you don't waste your money here and there. You're not stuck with items for years. Um, so yeah, we're going to create a formula for people. It's going to work. Let me tell you. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're dealing with the quarantine and COVID-19 right now. Um, it's been tough. We're in California. We have the shelter in place policies. Uh, we were talking earlier off the record about uh, acquiring N95 masks. Uh, yeah. Could you speak on that and trying to get that in value? Uh, yeah. Um, just from dealing with the e commerce business, uh, we've made a bunch of connections uh, all over the world. And you deal with a bunch of people internationally for sure, manufacturers mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, with that, come we found someone who actually manufactures N95 masks. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we were trying to do was get the N95 masks to the States at the time when the COVID-19 first started blowing up like about four weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, what we learned is that it's never about the money and everything is usually political. Um, mm-hmm. The only way that you could get N95 masks over from China to America where if you had a private jet and were able to like avoid certain things like the government, um, people were seizing masks for political reasons and other stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just crazy how much politics affects business and how much people kind of don't even care about the money, but just to hurt people. It's insane. Right. On both sides. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Super unfortunate. Right. So how were you able to make like those different connections, like international did, um, were you, were you just chatting with them through email? Did you have to fly out there? Um, what's crazy with the mass situation was uh, one of our first uh, head of marketing people, uh, shout out to Zhao. She's actually in China right now. Um, mm-hmm. She used to live out here and then she moved back to China and her friend just happened to have a, a N95 connection. So wow. that, was, 
Yeah, it's just, it's it's just yeah, that's man. Business for me is always luck of the draw, man. Just to get lucky and help people. I can't lie, for sure. Yeah, that's how that happened. Okay. So, uh, so what what other things do you have going on? You know, uh, surrounding Vidica, and where do you see it like in the future? Oh uh, yeah, like right now, we actually just got an email this morning. Uh, we have an interview with an accelerator program. Um, a celebrated pro- accelerator program is a program that helps you um, with anything you need, basically. So this accelerator program would offer us $100,000 if you get accepted, and they'll mm-hmm. help you from anything from, like, building connections to building business plans. I think this one offers a year-free office space, basically, which doesn't really help anyone mm-hmm. during COVID-19. <laughs> But uh, right. different accelerator programs offer different um, advantages, but they also take equity too. So you have to give up a share of your company uh, depending on what you negotiate. So each accelerator mm-hmm. program is different. There's a bunch of them. They ask for different things. They offer different things. Super interesting. How do you find these accelerator programs? Google. <laughs> Google okay. and Twitter. Uh, networking, man. Networking is the biggest thing. Like a lot of people use social networking for just playing around and messing around, but you can really do a lot of easy, simple networking just by sending a tweet or a direct message and Google too. Mm-hmm. For sure. Can you speak on that? Because a lot of people do use social media a lot. A lot of people yeah. sometimes waste time and, and waste productivity that they could be using towards other needs. Yeah. Um, can you just throw out some ideas that they could be using towards those? Um, yeah, just uh, what I what I've learned from just Twitter, even trying to do the business stuff is just instead of speaking about I even I use my regular Twitter to do business stuff. I tweet mm-hmm. some crazy things sometimes, but I still will tweet about like business stuff and just mm-hmm. even a simple tweet about like, oh, we're struggling trying to find venture capitalists or where can we find someone to help us? Usually mm-hmm. some people will respond. And um, and if you respond to these people and have conversations, it's like building a real life connection, like people build trust. You can see who follows each other so you can know, like, oh, this is this person's network. Um, yeah, especially on Twitter. Um, or one retweet could take you anywhere in the world. So that's the yeah. best place to start that I think. Um, and commenting. Um, once you do your research and go look out for VCs, you can Google anything. So once you find the VCs or the people who you think are connected to these venture capitalist firms or angel investors, you just go tweet them. <laughs> they, they usually reply back. They talk back, definitely. Right. Man. So as of lately, like what what have you been up to as far as like productivity and what you're trying to do, like on the individual level? Uh, man, and, man, individual level, I got so much going on. Um, shout out to uh, People's Breakfast Oakland, actually. Since we've been uh, since COVID nineteen hit, we run a volunteer or a mutual aid program where we go out once a month and provide um, food, other essentials, um, anything we can for the houseless people in Oakland. Um, we were actually just in Forbes magazine. They did an article on this, uh, I think on Monday. Yeah, so it's pretty dope. Uh, since COVID-19 hit and the shelters are shutting down, we feel like the uh, government is really failing the people who are most vulnerable because they're still on the street. So we've upped it from once a month to three times a week. And it's only about 10 of us to 15 of us who are able to do it. So it's just like, mm-hmm. just so crazy. Um, Local, state, or, or, or the... Or like the federal government, or all sides. Both. I feel like yeah. I feel like all yeah. all the way around from from a county level all the way up to federal. Definitely mm-hmm. fell in the houseless people in America for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's something I've been. So with that, along with just trying to get in Vinica, we've been having meetings with our advisors, and uh, Accelerator just hit us. So we have an interview with the Accelerator program next week. Um, all this while still doing the e-commerce stuff. With COVID-19, everybody's buying everything on Amazon right now. So business is booming on the e-commerce side. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I've been making like four to $5,000 a day from Amazon since this is it. So I can't complain at all. <laughs> yeah. Could you speak on like the, the Amazon, like uh, the selling like selling points that you use the platform? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so what we do is we, uh, we pull data from Amazon. I forgot mm-hmm. the name of the AI bot, but there's a, a app you could anybody could get it. It's not even that expensive either. I'll find the name after this, probably. But um, you pull the data and you can see the sales rank. You can see each category, so you don't waste your money. So like you know, when most people say, "Oh, you sell stuff on Amazon," what you sell? And then I'm like, I have no idea what I sell. <laughs> like, 
at all. We're selling like the closest thing like that anyone can relate to is I've sold scotch tape on Amazon. Like it's crazy things. It's um what we do is we basically pull the data, see what sells the most, see what sells the most consistently. That's not a trendy item. So we always make smart buys. So that way you always make your money back. It's very, very low risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the best part about it's it. It's like random random items. Yeah, ran, like I have actually I think one of the items I sell, which we just found out what it was. Like mind you, the stuff shifts to the office. We just looking like what is it? It's yeah. uh you know like a photo album, the old school photo album. Uh photo like album a, book? Yeah, like from the nineties. Like where you put the old school, yeah, the book yeah, you yeah. tell the pages to the to the photo album. So it's people out oh, there the, still the, using the laminated pages. Yeah, exactly. So it's still people out there who still using old school photo albums, man, and putting them in the pages and need more pages and stuff like that. Yeah, it's crazy. How, how do you maintain, like, when people are looking up these items, right? How do you yeah. get them to pull up as, like, the top searches? So, as a top seller, like, so most, so what we do is shout out to Sean again. We have, um, we have, oh, Sean. what am I trying to say? Yeah, Sean, Sean. We have a uh, special, um, special I don't know what we have special deals with these distributors so basically we're the exclusive deals is all I'm trying to say. we have exclusive deals with these distributors so sometimes we're the only people that sell them um mm-hmm. so most of the items that we do sell we have very very low competition except the group of e-commerce people it's just us for the most part mm-hmm. yeah and um for people that's trying to get into like e-commerce, how can they get started? Like on a small level, do you need a, a small budget? Um, you could definitely start on a small budget. Um, we actually give free e-commerce seminars too. Um, I'll probably post some of that once COVID-19 is over with. But um, you can start as small as $500. Of course, the return isn't going to be super high. Like you make, might make 250 bucks. But I started with $10,000 and, and that was in, I think, September. September maybe September October and I'm up to like forty fifty thousand dollars in revenue for my own company personally, which is super dope. You know, a bunch of companies. Were you working oh, yeah. using your personal capital or or getting a small uh, personal loan? Um, if you have the money, if you can afford to spend ten thousand dollars, you should definitely do it yourself. Um, if you need the loan, I think it's worth the loan as well because, like I said, again, you're, we're pulling data, so it's not even a random buy so you don't have to worry about the risk so you'll be able to pay the loan back for sure i think it's worth it so low risk yeah definitely so uh i think i was reading it was uh your twitter and you were talking about how you you uh you spoke to different um i think it was high schools about about and how a lot of high school students don't even know different uh industries i mean uh different positions in tech they don't even know what tech is, man. Like, it's crazy. Like, these kids got iPhones and stuff like that, but they've never even understood or how it's built or what's an app and how to build an app. Um, yeah, definitely. I spoke at uh, one of the high schools in Oakland where they didn't even know what a startup program was, like, any of that stuff, what coding was. It was super sad, man. Super sad. Yeah. And do you know any like coding academies that you did you recommend any coding academies or anything uh, you can start coding? Just Google, huh? Mo- yeah, I was just about to say that. Most of my friends, uh, actually, my friend is a uh, he works at Google. He self taught. Shout out uh, Jeremiah. Yeah, he taught himself. He started. He yeah, he started teaching himself, and then I'm pretty sure he probably ended up going to a coding academy after. But he started by teaching himself. Most coders I know, and most people I know in tech are usually self-taught and their college dropouts for the most part, which is also crazy. Or they have a degree that has nothing to do with tech. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I went to school for environmental science. Like <laughs> nothing, nothing to do with nothing to do with any of this for sure. Yeah. And how have you seen like the tech tech industry pr- progress so far? Um I guess they say like the, the buzzword is like diversity <laughs> diversity hiring. <laughs> Uh, they're trying to be diverse, but I, I don't really think a bunch of tech companies, they're not putting in the effort to di- diversify at all, if I'm being mm-hmm. honest. Um, it's just like a buzzer. Like, oh, yeah, we tried to hire this guy. Like, he's black. Or, we tried to hire this woman. 
And I think they're saying that they're trying, but they're really not because if they were really trying, you would put these resources in the schools that I've visited where you need to start at the beginning. Like you can't say like, oh, I'm trying to hire these people from these diverse backgrounds when they don't even have the resources to even know what you're talking about. It's just an unfair. I, I think it's an unfair uphill battle for anyone trying to do it for sure. And you're using like your resources, which on a level is like, you know, you're using your personal finances, yeah. um, your knowledge, and they have like a huge, a mass amount of resources and they could be doing the same thing and putting that towards that. Do you think they know or they're, they're ignorant towards it? Or they just that, turning them on? Yeah, I think for the most part, I think they're, I think they're ignorant towards it because some people aren't just bad people by like they just don't know most people just have no idea what's going on anywhere like if you ask steve jobs like what's going on at mcclinus high school in west oakland he's not gonna have an answer for you. Like, it's just... so i think a lot of people just don't know um i said steve jobs i mean jeff bezos rest in peace though steve jobs but yeah if you ask jeff bezos what's going on in any inner city oakland school like, he's not going to have an answer for you. He probably don't even know what's going on outside of his private jet. Like, so I think it takes, like, people like me or whoever has an opportunity to push that. Because if we start giving the resources to the kids, there is no need for a diversity program because they'll be good at it and be able to do their own thing and just get there equally. Like, I really believe that. Right. I remember when I was in um, middle school, iMovie, that was the most tech thing to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man what i'm trying to think what middle school i don't even think there wasn't even that i'm you know what actually what's funny is that's when myspace first came, uh, first came out in seventh grade we started using myspace like seventh or eighth grade and it actually taught my generation how to code because we used to edit the profiles and then you could go on the sites and like pick a code out and i had some I, friends who could do like custom pages and then they uh-huh. would like, I would like pay my uh, homegirl, shout out Anna, I still remember this. I would pay her. And then she would like put like my name in the background. People were like, how you do that? Like, I was like, yeah. oh, no, I'll pay her to yeah, do the it. Matrix dropping like in the background. Yeah, that was coding. See, and that's the thing. We didn't even realize at the time, like, you can make $100,000 off of this if you keep learning how to do it. Like, we just making MySpace uh, layouts, which is crazy. Right. Yeah, that was that was the closest thing I got to like tech for sure. Mm-hmm. What about uh, marketing? Marketing. Like, how uh, is it you know, marketing or like how are you learning how to market yourself, you know, in tech? Yeah. Um, just marketing in general as a person. Um, my bro, I remember one day I was on Instagram and then uh, my bro, Delinci, was like, hey, man, you need to start using your real name on Instagram and start branding yourself. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I just would post memes, just dumb stuff. And then I thought about it like, oh, I guess so. So, like, even on Instagram alone from my personal page, I like to just, I post certain things at certain times. Um, I like to give off a persona. Like, I like to travel a lot, stuff like that. I like to talk about business and uh, money a lot and, like, um, news, anything, any current news stuff. Um, so, that's definitely a brand, like, so people feel like they could come and reach out to me. Like, oh, how are you making this money or how are you doing this? And I'll never share secrets because I feel like, there's enough money for everybody. Like I don't, <laughs> everyone can give money. That's, that's my biggest thing. It's mm-hmm. about, this is about knowing how, and most people don't want to show people how, which sucks, sadly. And the important thing I think you said, you know, just um, exposing those people to the knowledge and then branding. Branding is super important. Yeah. Branding is super important. You know, like you're not going to do business with a dude who might be smoking 20 blunts on Instagram. That's all they do. You're like, what does this person do? Like, so it's just simple. It's just simple stuff like that. Um, and just learning how to market uh, actually was from my first job, uh, who, how I got involved in tech, which is a crazy story within itself. Like I got involved in tech because I answered the Craigslist ad for like sports betting. Yeah. Yeah. What? Let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah, so uh, my regular job, or how I got started, I'm still with them, actually. I'm still with the company, uh, Winview Games. Um, we've been on, I'm pretty sure, CNBC, like Fox Business, all that stuff. Um, we're actually going public, I think, in a couple of days, which is super dope. So I've been there for five years, and we started in an engineer's like bedroom, which mm-hmm. is crazy. Um, and I just started out like uh, producing the content live because we were a live sports bed map. So we started out producing the content live 
And um, we just grew from there. Like we got $12 million in funding. Um, and then I was one of the first people to go full time. And that was my first full time job ever. So, so I, when, like, what do you guys do? Uh, so we're a live sports betting app. So there aren't any sports right now, so it's kind of hard to show. But <laughs> uh, but uh, if you're watching a game, each quarter is a different contest. And whoever mm-hmm. ha- we put out a series of props for each quarter, football, basketball, whatever. And whoever has the highest accumulated points from that for those props in that quarter wins the money. We have different rooms, $50 rooms, $100 rooms, head to head. You could pay as, uh, play as low as a $2 room. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty fun at, at its peak. And then uh, we're trying to do some rebranding stuff right now and uh, head into esports actually due to COVID-19. So, yeah, we've been working on that. So that's pretty fun as well. That's awesome. I don't know what's more legendary, uh, starting in a garage or you said, you said in the engineer's bedroom? Yeah, engineer's bedroom. We started at his house, basically. And then we didn't have an office, nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing. That this job made me look at money way differently because they were like, "Oh yeah, when we get funding enough funding, we're gonna make you go full time." We got twelve million dollars, and that was my first day full time. Like I'm in a meeting. I went from like just a guy who make props to like you sitting in on the decisions now. <laughs> like I was like, "What?" <laughs> like and I was like this twenty three year old kid. Like and I'm black too. So like right. I'm sitting I'm sitting in the meeting. We in there with like the board members, and it's like me. I got a tea coat on in Jordan. Like this <laughs> is hella dope. <laughs> right. how, how did it feel? It felt at first I was just like, wow, this is super interesting because the way we were talking about spending twelve million dollars, it wasn't even like it wasn't even like it was twelve million dollars. That this is that changed my whole like outlook on money. Cause they were like, Oh yeah, this twelve million dollars is gonna last us like six months. Like I was like, What? <laughs> I'm like, twelve million what? Like it's only like ten of us in here. Like what we could what we could I made my hand and I'm like, man, we could just take the money and cut. <laughs> I'm like, what twelve million? I can live the rest of my life. So just being in on that and that's my first real day, I'm just like, twelve million, what? And then just how we um how they broke it down, how some of this money's gonna go to marketing, we have to pay ourselves. We have to have some money left over for emergency situations. You got to pay lawyers. You got to do this. And that was the first time where I really got to, like, understand what it's like to just how much really goes into a huge type of business and what mm-hmm. what it really takes. You translate those skills into Vitica. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Into just everyday life, really. Just, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, just a network. Just networking, man. That's the best thing I can tell people. Always network, for sure. And when you started off in tech, like how did those those board members? How did they perceive you, like in the room, or you know, when you're when you're um, moving around in tech? Um, what's crazy is I'll never forget. So I I don't have my degree. So that same day we had a celebration. Basically, we had a party at one of the board members' house, and um, uh, one of, our head of marketing. She used to work at Apple. I don't want to get this completely wrong. I'm pretty sure she used to uh, do like the head of marketing for Apple and stuff like that. And then uh, her husband's the founder of the company. So mm-hmm. she's doing marketing for us too. And then uh, she pulled, She was. I was like, should I go back to school and finish my degree? And she started laughing at me and was, and was like, and was like, what do you need a g- degree for? You're smart. And I just mm-hmm. looked like, what? <laughs> and I was just like, and ever since then, like that changed my life forever for sure. Cause I was yeah. just like, oh yeah, I guess it's overrated. And that gave me the confidence, you know, to be able to go out here. Like, I guess I am smart. And then like, let me, let me go prove it to myself. Not only the people around me, but to myself for sure. I think that's the biggest thing. That's the b- biggest battle is just um, battling yourself and just trying to start things yourself and getting yeah. over that. Hump. For sure. I think the biggest thing, especially uh, with, Black people, especially young black people, when we go into these spaces that are uh, predominantly white or male whites, um, you can get this imposter syndrome. Like, it's like, do I really belong here? Am I deserving of this? And I think once you're able to get over that and have that self-confidence, it'll take anything you do to the next level because now you're not second-guessing yourself. And usually it's all on us, man. Like, it's like, oh, I got haters. Like I'm my biggest hater. Like I like yeah. I'm like, oh, that ain't good enough. You know, you used to be an athlete too. Like that's just going back to that. Just like, oh, I'm not working hard enough or I'm not practicing hard enough. That's so once you get that out of your head, like, oh, I'm I'm doing all right. Let me do better. But it's it's about it's about building self confidence for sure. And changing as well. Like yeah. you can change, but 
but you don't want to change for somebody else. You know, I say when we get into these spaces, we put on like a, a, a more, I will say, like Eurocentric voice, like we, robotic voice. Fact. You know, we don't really become uh, a part within ourselves, you know, and um, it's okay to adapt as long as you're adapting and not changing yourself, but you're learning and acquiring skills that can help you build and navigate in that field where you can um, build relationships with people and not have to do it and sacrifice uh, yourself and your, and your, not like your soul, but, you know, just sacrifice your, uh, it's pretty well, close. <laughs> it's pretty close. It's only your morals and your ethics and, and things of that yeah. nature. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's the best part. If about, you have to. Yeah. yeah, about <laughs> what I do, like sports betting, I'm like, man, you can't be involved in sports betting to have morals. So I feel like <laughs> that's what I always say. I'm like, how, many, how, how, how much moral do we have around here? But uh, that's, a, that's another thing I want to credit. I got lucky, like the space that I went into they allowed me to be myself at all times. Like, and they allowed the people, like I was able to hire like 15 of my friends because they trusted mm-hmm. me so much. And I allowed them to be themselves. And I honestly feel like that creates a better work environment because then it's not tense. It's like all these people from different backgrounds. And I feel like that's really what America's about, man. If you could get all these people from different backgrounds who don't, you don't have to change. You just have to be like, oh, that's different. And then you'd be like, oh, that's different. Like, that's what makes America tight. Is that, like, you're able to mingle with all these different people from different backgrounds from all over. And I feel like once you start, I guess, code switching and stuff like that, it gets lost. And then you start to lose yourself, for sure. So I know a lot of people that lost themselves and now they're just stuck in those nine to fives. Yeah, for sure. I, man, crazy. Those are the same people that can't deal with this whole work from home environment. That makes sense too, because they gotta deal with themselves. <laughs> they're used to they're used to doing the nine to five, and then on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they go uh, drinking and they go they go out, and they they look forward to Friday and, and Sunday and Saturday. Yeah, they dread that's, Monday. Yeah, that's like that's the best part I feel like about this. It don't matter what day it is, but like I've been lucky enough to live like oh, it don't matter what day it is. Like we gotta get this work done or. Maybe I might be off. I might be not having nothing to do Monday through Friday. Like that's the best part about just uh, mm-hmm. being an entrepreneur for the most part, or being able to make your own schedule, man. It's your freedom. It's freedom. And have you had like ups and downs, and what motivates you like to pick yourself up from like that down? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, this last year was probably one of the like worst. Like we uh, we had some layoffs with our with my regular job. We have um, we had layoffs because we ran out of money. Basically, uh, I believed in the product so much that I worked for free for two weeks, mm-hmm. and um, we took pay cuts. And I was just like, "Wow, what am I gonna do next?" Which is what made me me. I just keep hustling though. So like that's how I ended up linking up with my bro Sean about the Invitica stuff, and then the e-commerce stuff. So I put basically, you know, what was my last of my money. I'm like. Well, if it don't work, it, it don't work. If it work, it work, bro. Like, yeah. I know what it's like to not have nothing anyway. So it's just like, well, I'm going to take this risk. I've always been a risky person anyway. So it's like, and I and I feel like when you're back against the wall, that's when you're supposed to take the most risk, like, because you don't got nothing to lose. And I'm a real mm-hmm. in business and anything. Like, that's the best time to take a risk, for sure. And, and right now, like in COVID-19, the people that I feel like are adapting the most are the hustlers. Or are sure. the people that were mar- marginalized, or are the people that were like um, incarcerated or that mm-hmm. got out of jail? They're loving this time right now because this mm-hmm. is like, this is something that I'm used to. You know, yeah. it's something that I could I could thrive in, and people aren't really used to. And like, what do you see in your mind, like people adapting to this this new situation? Yeah, I know people who can't even be in the house right now. Like, I'm one of them people too. I hate being in the house though. But it's some people who are letting it affect everything they do, though. Like, which, and then I think, actually, I sent a tweet out um, when this first started. I was like, you've been in your house for 10 days and you're probably going crazy, right? Imagine how it feels to be in solitary confinement. We're not even talking about jail. Solitary confinement where you literally trapped in your own thoughts and can't do nothing. And I feel like, though, that, if you could do that, you could do anything. <laughs> like, that's, if you can make it out of that, you can make it through anything. And I think this COVID-19 is going to show, like, 
who the strong survives basically. And I'm not talking from a health standpoint. I'm talking about from like a mental and a hustle aspect. A lot of businesses are going to fail and the economy is going to crash. Basically, <laughs> I feel like that's definitely going to happen once they stop pumping money into the stock market, which is eventually going to happen. <laughs> um, and I think it's just going to breed a new hustle. Like it's going to be new businesses, it's going to be new stuff. And I feel like that's when the poor can rise to the top for sure. It's the best time mm-hmm. to do it. And what do you think about uh stock market and how it's been up and down and like there's been like some infiltration of like senators um doing like inside trading. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah. They don't really have actual proof, but you know, what are your thoughts on that? Oh yeah. I mean the thing <laughs> I say we don't need proof because I always say, What would you do if you knew somebody was gonna take all your money? <laughs> you'd probably you'd probably leave with your money. Like that's just that's just right. a normal thing to do. Um but yeah, with the stock market crashing, I feel like I feel like that's why Americans haven't panicked yet. Because if you look at the news, like, oh, the stock market's doing fine, we're gonna be okay. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's for rich people because they could pump 1.2 trillion dollars into the stock market. Like that doesn't that doesn't help the average person, which is what mm-hmm. I because I'm I'm kind of stuck in between. I'm still an average person. Like I'm closer to being poor and rich. So like it affects me. Like I want to be there one day, but it's like wow, this affects everyone way worse than what it should. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, with the stock market, like, uh, I have some shares in some companies that are worth absolutely nothing now, <laughs> like, it's just worth, mm-hmm. worth nothing. Uh, we're about to go public, I think, soon with another company is just worth, we don't even know yet. It's like, oh, we don't know. Um, uh, it's affecting a lot of stuff. And I feel like it's just, that's another thing. If you're older and you put all your money into the stock markets and believe in like, I can retire with a pension, you're done for, which sucks. Because there's no like backup program. Hopefully, the government takes care of, it, especially the older population. But we'll see. Did you hear about the? Um, I think it was in uh, was in New Jersey. There was a nursing home. Mm-hmm. They had about like over ten plus bodies. Oh, because like, of COVID, right? Right. Yeah, you heard about it out here too, right? Not in here, but uh, Redwood yeah. City. They got like yeah, ninety five year old just died today i think and like 60 of the people in the nursing home including staff and the um patients all have covid like all of them mm-hmm. and that's right here right in california right in the, in the bay um, and i was just driving by i seen a sign where it said um the people i was in alameda i was in and out they're looking for nurses and uh, rns for, yeah. for nursing homes. so it's it's um it's a need for that too yeah definitely um and that and when we talk about resources and stuff and just business, now, when you have, like, if you want to become a doctor or something and you're stuck in the hood, how many doctors do you know that are black or that look like us? Like, I, I know, like, one, I think. <laughs> and it's just like, if you give the people in the inner city these resources, maybe we'd have more nurses and more doctors to be able to help out. Like, once you start to... um I must say, once you start to like shrink the access to things, eventually it's going to come back to bite you. Like mm-hmm. I know America's wishing we had more black doctors and black nurses, and that's programs that easily should be available to kids in Oakland or any inner city school for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. So and make, yeah, make it tuition more more affordable. Yeah, make it more affordable. Exactly. It shouldn't cost somebody four hundred thousand dollars to become a doctor. I think I just seen. Uh, a doctor was saying like he's like four hundred thousand dollars in student debt, and mind you, he's risking his life every day <laughs> dealing with COVID nineteen patients, and you're still in debt. That's insane. Like, that's crazy. And then it sucks when they really want to help people that are really affected by it, and yeah. go into like the inner cities, and then they're getting paid less. And yeah, then, then you don't get no money. Yeah, to pay off the student loans. Yeah, yeah. And then you get I'll hit and after people moved into the inner cities. The rent is high, three to four thousand. Exactly. Messed up. That's, that's capitalism. That's the thing. Like once once people get too greedy, man, it, it eventually it, it all comes crashing down. Eventually, but capitalism is just exposed. I mean, it's been exposed, but it's, yeah. it's getting exposed even more during this time right now. Yeah, for sure. Because the people dying are usually poor people. Um, for the the majority of people who are dying now, especially are poor people. I just seen another article today. Uh, it's some island in Florida that I never even knew about. That like all the top like rich people live at, they were able to get tests for everyone, <laughs> everybody on yeah, the island. When they were saying like how, how are tigers getting tested before humans? 
Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's just like it's just money, money, money. That's when once it's America, it's all about money. Like even the NBA players got tested. How are like what? How y'all know y'all got it? How who was tested y'all? Like and then we found out about how there's like private practices that are able to test people if you have enough money, right? And that came out like a few days later. And I'm just like, how much money does it really cost? Because it should be a billionaire somewhere that could pay for everyone's test. That's that's what doesn't make sense. To me. Um, mm-hmm. And that's when I that's when I think it's not only about the ignorance part, but also it comes down to some people not caring to, for sure. How do you expose these people, or or, or hold them accountable? Because I feel like the holding them accountable thing. It's like a slow, it's a slow process. It's, it's sometimes working, you know, like the cancellation thing through Twitter uh-huh. and like through social media uh, platforms. But at the same time, yeah. if you have so much money, you could just, like we was talking about branding, you could just rebrand and do another business and they're doing the yeah. same thing in that, in that yeah. industry. And <laughs> sadly, the only answer, man, that I have, if you want to really, <laughs> is revolution, man. <laughs> like, there's no... <laughs> <laughs> like man, till people up some arms, man, and really get tired of it. Like I don't know. Like if if watching like a thousand people die, and then it's majority poor people or homeless people or houseless people, and mm-hmm. old people are most vulnerable. Eventually, like we're gonna get old one day. Like don't you like if something's preventable from when I'm eighty? Like damn, I don't want to die, man. <laughs> like what? Like why I gotta be me? Um, <laughs> If that don't make people, but I feel like that's another thing with capitalism too, though, is that it's, it separates people. Like once you start making a certain type of money, you're like, oh, this is who I affiliate with. This is why I'm feeling good. Like you start, you start disassociating from either where you came from or the people who you feel are below you. So you feel like it's not your problem, which mm-hmm. is what a lot of people do. I, I feel like it's almost human nature, honestly. Um, Please tell me you've seen uh, the Netflix uh, movie, The Platform. No, I haven't seen it. It was exposing uh, capitalism. Well, what it was about was is that this guy, he signed up for an experiment. Um, and it was a, a study where they put him inside a prison. And the prison had different platforms. Uh-huh. And uh, it was about, I think, 252 platforms. And oh, the is people- that the one where the orange, like, I've seen the beginning. Of, is that like he had, like, ate the orange and it wasn't for him or something like that? And the, yeah, it, would, it, it would drop down food and people can eat the yeah. food, but you get a certain amount of time to eat. And if you take food from the, the platter, but it starts from the people at the top and then the food drop, uh, the food platform drops down. So the people oh. at the top they'll get the food first and they'll drop down to the next platform. And then sometimes the people from the top would spit on the food or like stump on the food and then the other people get the leftovers and then so on and so on. And then if you take food from the platform, they will release like toxic stu- gas or you, you couldn't breathe, you yeah. know, to kill you off. Yeah, I've seen and, the beginning of that. That's what I actually, yeah, I've seen the beginning. That's crazy. Yeah, but the whole rational thing was if uh, people were rational about it and just took for what they need and yeah. speaking on like, this whole tissue, um, the, the access to like supplies and tissues and masks and, and gloves and people stocking up that and just took for what you need yeah. and just exposing capitalism, you know, yeah. people would fine and just be living more healthier yeah it just shows you like like what's crazy is right i think when the whole COVID 19 stuff started i was in costa rica so mm-hmm. i didn't even so i'm looking i'm talking to my parents and stuff and then i'm on twitter and i'm looking at people buying toilet paper i'm like i'm like man if it's the end of the it's world that's, right. your, that's, your, that's what you buy it like a thousand <laughs> like what that's, that's how you survive it they did, they and, did a, the number on it too a math, mathematical equation they say you would need to, uh, excuse my language, wipe your butt like <laughs> 168 times a day for all that toilet paper. <laughs> that, like, that's, it didn't make sense to me. And when I was in Costa Rica, they had a Walmart uh, where I was staying at in Costa Rica. It's everything you needed, Clorox. Like, I'm just like, what is everybody doing? But that just shows you like how Americans are like, are just trained to think. Like that's, Fear base. forget everybody else. Mm-hmm. We gotta go. We gotta go. I gotta fend for myself. I gotta go fend for my family. Most people don't even fend for their family. I've seen somebody fighting an old lady over some toilet paper. Like it's insane. Mm-hmm. Like it's more toilet paper, man. Like what? Like crazy. And that's just capitalism in a nutshell. It's just like people feel like there's a lack of resources when they really aren't. Sure. Because you, yeah, you might have to sacrifice something. Like 
most of the time you don't. People just don't want to give it, especially at the top. But how much what money do you think do you about when they change the policies at the grocery stores just for senior citizens to shop for one hour in the morning? I think that's great. Like I think about them the most. Um, a lot of houseless people we serve with the breakfast program is mo- mo- it's a lot of seniors out there, and it's like a lot of disabled people. And it's like how these are the people who are most vulnerable. Like how if they don't have a young person like us to go shop for them or something like that, what are they supposed to do? Like there's nothing they can do. And I think that's a uh, shout out to the stores who did that. I think that's a great and wonderful thing that they did that for sure. Yeah. Um, I think they should do them. I think they should do that every day. They should do it's it a- in general. <laughs> Yeah, I only think you should have a policy for it. Yeah, uh, for just, sure. Just the more people should be able to, uh, to come through. Um, yeah, everything else going on with with, uh, with COVID. What do you think about the shelter in place? Do you think letting go too soon or just, just holding off on it and continue the shelter in place and people working from home? Um, From a work standpoint, but that's the thing too. That's So like from a work standpoint for like someone like me, I can work from home. Like I was already working from home basically for the most part. Um, But that's a privileged way of thinking though. So like it's people who are still essential workers who mainly are usually minorities and are dying from COVID because they have to go outside to go to work because they're essential. Like it's kids at Safeway only making $15 an hour right now. And they're the most important people in America right now. That's insane. Like that they're only getting paid $15 an hour. So I feel like the shelter in place should definitely be in effect a little bit longer until we at least get a vaccine, man. Like if there is one, mm-hmm. um, that would be super interesting. Or another way, I think you said it's probably what thirty days each. They're going to slowly start opening up more and more. Yeah, I was or thinking that was twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. Yeah, it's 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 a Certain it's a states. tricky situation. Because Trump, he said he's going to leave it up to the the governors to decide. Yeah. And I think that's problematic. Because places yeah, like, like Texas and Florida, they want to get the economy back. back yeah, back China. booming, back booming. And then the result of that, people go probably die. <laughs> like, that's, that's the sad part about it. Um, but also that just te- shows us another thing that America is way too big to be under like one, <laughs> like one thing, like, if some people like the fact that New York has so many Corona cases and us in, in California, we're basically fine. Like if you go outside in California right now, even though we have a shelter in place, I just went and ran today. There's people outside running, walking. Like it doesn't even seem like there's this thing going on in all honesty. It's just kind of weird. But if you go to the other flip side, I know people who live on the East coast and they're like, Oh my God, it's the apocalypse here. Like, mm. so, you know, it's just, a state by state thing, but I, I feel like people should take precaution for sure. Mm-hmm. And that sucks though. Like, what if you can't? If you have no say in, like, if you want to go to work or not? <laughs> like, <that's... laughs> um, yeah. you know what I'm saying you're working at those those uh, jobs where you're essential worker. You really don't. You don't have a say. Yeah, you don't have a say, and that's that's what sucks. I think I seen an article like it was like a woman. She just wanted to keep helping people at the grocery store. And she was like, all right, then she died because like, she just wanted to help people. And that's crazy. I'm like, it shouldn't even have to be that. But really, I feel like the government officials, like what's the point of having police officers who are here to serve and protect the community? Those should be the people who are going out and buying stuff for the elderly folks, stuff like that. Because if you could take somebody to jail, you should be able to get somebody some food too or provide some masks. Like, I think I say, I forgot. I think it was in Philly. The cops were beating the dude off the bus because <laughs> he didn't have a mask on. Oh, the mask. Yeah, you put yeah, it everybody like, was you like, got a mask. You don't got a mask. I need you all to get off. Yeah, and then, of course, <laughs> they get violent and aggressive. Like, first off, what if people can't get a mask, don't know where to get a mask from, don't know how to make a mask? It's, mm-hmm. it's all these resources thing. And, that's, and, like, why not just give out free masks? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that just, that's the things that, like, I feel like civil service, the police, like, firefighters already do a pretty good job at it but like the police should be out here man you know what here go three masks instead of me fighting and also probably contracting COVID-19 for giving it out I should just give this person a mask and walk away like that that would be the best you're pulling them off the bus you could just contract it right there yeah you basically you basically policing someone because they can't afford or don't know where to get a resource 
Mm-hmm. And that's that's just targeting poor people, like which capitalism does a good job, sadly, of doing that for sure. And what do you think about the people avoiding shelter in place and hanging out in large groups? Yeah, that's crazy. Um <laughs> You know, people gonna be people. I think I just seen the protest today. I think it's in Michigan. Like they're protesting like with Confederate flags, talking about like we should be able to go outside and stuff like that. Me, I'm was like, a pro- protest or like they were really out in the streets? Yeah, no, they really out in the street, like uh-huh. protesting, like <laughs> hundreds of people uh, about the COVID nineteen. Some call it a hoax, of course. Some saying they want to be able to go outside and do stuff. I think Michigan has like the strictest. Um, COVID-19 like you can't even go visit friends though like so mm. you know out here we could kind of like go oh go stay in the house and then people were like oh yeah I'm going to go visit my family after 14 days and stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah I think there's a little bit more strict so people just were like protesting which is crazy now if they all mm-hmm. get sick I guess we know who was right <laughs> so it's just like we gotta see and what'd you think about the the stimulus package Oh yeah, that twelve hundred hit my account. That was cool. <laughs> <Don't complain. laughs> okay, uh, okay. you would... so how do you think people are going to spend it, invest it, um, or you know, uh, use the money to to maximize it? Uh, yeah, just like uh, with the, e- I actually did another uh, e-commerce pot today with the twelve hundred dollars. I just added it on to the thing. So like, um, I feel like that's the thing though. Like people like uh, me or someone who's already somewhat business savvy or someone who taught me how to do stuff, I already know what to do with the money. But to give $1,200 to a regular person who's never been taught of uh, this is how you can invest it, this is what you can do with it properly, they're just going to spend the money, which is what the economy wants. You know, <laughs> like that's what the government wants. Like, yeah, give me yeah. yeah, and some people aren't going to be... And some people got bills to pay. Like, I'm also speaking from someone who's still getting paid. Like, imagine if you lost your job. I know a bunch of people who've lost their businesses. I have friends who own restaurants and stuff like that, who've lost their restaurants due to this in a month span. Just, and then they have to pay their workers still. So there's people who really need these this $1,200 for rent, for groceries. And if you live in California, man, we all know that doesn't even cover your rent. So it's like... It's, it's it's like you got to use it i i feel like there should be more money given out eventually because this is going to be longer than a month Apparently, they're, they're running out of money the small business administration it's already gone yeah it's already gone and they, they're saying that they're not accepting any new applications to help small businesses out with the ten thousand dollars yeah and then what's crazy is i think they said they gave forty three thousand millionaires like 1.2 million dollars each or something like that i don't know if that's completely correct but you know, like yeah, people, you. yeah, I check my sources on that, but it's something in the stimulus, it was in the language of the stimulus package where millionaires get bailed out like millions, like a million dollars each. And like the average person gets 1200 bucks. And what people don't know is like, it's been a lot of confusion where they say, oh, am I going to, we're going to be taxed. We're getting the advance on our money. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a debit. So in order for them to, um, to have the debit, you have to have a credit. Yeah. So when we are, uh, 2020 taxes, which we haven't did yet, yep. um, it's going to appear as like a, a credit, like the American Opportunity Credit. And um, you don't have to pay it, but you, you're still going to have to uh, do your taxes and it's not going to affect your taxes in any way. Yeah, see, that's cool. And that's, I mean, that's the internet, though, just misinformation all day. Like, and it, and what's crazy is it's misinformation. Everyone could Google these things in like 30 seconds right. to figure out. And that's just, oh, man, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, some know. people looking for for the right information, you know, and they really trying to help their families. Yeah. So, you know, I try I tried to use my Twitter platform to tell people, you know, you still must check like when it's coming. If you didn't do your taxes, it takes your 2018 taxes. Yeah. And, you know, just information like that. Because some people have been just been spreading some crazy stuff, which I thought was crazy, like the advance. Yeah. On your, on your yeah. taxes. Making yeah. Sense. People, it doesn't make sense. But, you know, that's just misinformation and misconception that's why I take like you doing a good thing like giving people factual information and it's like people <laughs> we was off the record talking about the 5G thing we was like, what's, like what's going on like I don't know no but, idea uh, no idea but then even with the the stimulus check though like the $1,200 the fact that it only goes to people who did their taxes in 2018 does it I was trying to figure out if you're an independent person or was a dependent last year and you're not now, if you can still get it. Um, 
I don't I don't even know the information on that because I feel like that's unfair if you like imagine you just <laughs> got off to your parents' taxes and you started your job and now you can't get twelve hundred dollars, you probably need it the most, like the young adult. So uh I think California passed a bill actually for um for um uh, for unemployment and for if I'm correct, illegal immigrants. Um mm, to yeah. help them. Yeah, to help them. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good thing, man. Because, like, yeah. They, Kevin they, Newsom, he's been doing a great job. Yeah, he's actually been doing a wonderful job at just trying to get uh, money for everyone. That's why I, the crazy thing is, though, the houseless community. I think the hotel still haven't, the hotel thing hasn't gone through right. to get people. That would be, that. that's what I want to see for sure. But um, they're definitely trying, at least. It's more than a lot it's of stuff. It's the hotels sure. out there trying. It's the ones that... They were saying that they were worried about liability and people breaking lamps and stuff like that. People break stuff all the time. Simple stuff. And that's the thing. Like, how much is a lamp really worth, man? Like, we we, we could cover a lamp. Like, there's people out here who go die. Like, And that's really um, really what, like, capitalism comes down to is, like, what is a life worth at the end of the day? Like, There's no consciousness if- in, in capitalism. <laughs> Mm, not at all. It makes you a bad human, <laughs> to be honest with you. I would feel really better housing. I would huh? sleep better in. I said I would sleep better at night housing people in a hotel. Yeah, instead for of sure. just saying stay there, and just keeping it keeping it uh, empty until this thing goes down. Yeah. If we know if it ever will go down. And that's the thing. Some people gotta care. Like it's when you when people go out there, they don't see themselves in those people to help them. So like it's like why not exploit these people? Like that's how I feel like that's how a lot of people look at like situations like this or I don't care. This doesn't affect me like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like capitalism to an extent could be used for good. Like if people at the top actually use their money in a proper way. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of people don't. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. For sure. Because yeah, I like making Google. money. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, Google, I think they were donating masks. Uh, Tesla were donating masks. G, G, uh, GM, yeah. except they ran out of uh, projecting where they're going to be able to produce as many masks as they wanted to, but you spoke right. on the transportation thing. Because yeah. you know, they're domestic. They might not have international jets. Yeah, and that's so, and that's the thing, too. As Americans, we should be able to avoid that. Like that. If I was in charge, that would have been the first thing I did. If I heard all these people were dying and we don't have access to ventilators and masks, as the government, there shouldn't even be a market for that. We, I would have stopped everything and told you, you're manufacturing masks, you're manufacturing ventilators to all these top companies. And uh, I feel like some of them, like Elon took, the, took it out of him to go do it. You know, he did it himself, I guess, with Tesla, and they delivered the mask. But it's just like every company, like if you're any corporation, that should have, you're not doing computers, you're not doing nothing. That should have just been, to save lives, that could have been the easiest thing to do. And I feel like with capitalism, though, is people, oh, I feel like a response would be, I'm not making no money off this because that's what, I mean, that's what all anyone cares about. Like, not to be mm-hmm. dying, none of that. Yeah, yeah and we're worried about comparing this to uh, 2008. Uh, I think it's going to be worse. Well, definitely. Yeah, I think it's going to be worse. I think it's going to be 1920 depression I levels of... Worse than 1920. It's, it's gonna be worse. It's gonna be, it's gonna be 1920 levels of uh, yeah. What is it? I think 20 million people unemployed right now. Yeah, 20 million people uh, file for unemployment. It's only it's been crazy. a month. It's crazy. It's only been a month. A month. 20 million people. That's 20 million. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, if this doesn't call like civil unrest, I don't, I don't know what. Bro. Like, there is not. It's, it's like if people aren't mad about this, like. Why is my government failing me today? Like I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I think yeah, it's just blessed to be in the lucky few to be able to continue to make money. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. So, what do you see in Vitica um, in the next five years, ten years? Man, five to ten. <laughs> five. I, I can't even imagine ten. Like I'm just a five. <laughs> Five, we just hope to be uh, up and running. We'll definitely be profitable. All right, that's the other thing about us, too. Um, we'll definitely be a profitable company in five years just because of the way we have our business set up and everything we have in place. It's very low overhead. Um, we we 
plan on running to the B2B marketplace for sure. Like the, that whole, anything that connects you to Amazon or whatever, we want to take all that over. Like, uh, yeah, I'm big on that for sure. I think by then we, we won't need to do brand awareness everywhere, whatever we are for sure. How can people uh, get in contact with you? Um, you can follow me on Twitter at I am Africa Black and uh, on Instagram at I am Kelly Mitchell. All right. And how can they get in touch with Invitica? Uh, Invitica is actually I N V I D A underscore, and that's on Twitter and Instagram. Okay. And you can follow me there. You want to shout out uh, the contact information. Uh, yeah, uh, you can follow my business partner. He's been dealing with all the a lot of the VC stuff. Uh, Sean Bovell. Oh yeah, so Sean's Twitter, my business partner, man, is uh, at C O L L A T Z C O N G A E C T. I have no idea what that means, but I'll ask. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's my business partner, man. He uh, yeah, my game. We've been doing a lot of work, man. It's pretty dope pretty fun thank you for having me too man yeah thank you yeah thank you for being on here i wish you guys the best in the future continue with the with the greatness success continue helping people helping people in the community i uh, bring great service and thank you for being on the show 11 vc firm episode six we out yep thanks <laughs>